Hi folks, um, today I'd like to share some of the work that I've been doing on GFX. Um, I get a kick out of um, just playing around with these tools. Um, and there's these two features that I really, really like uh, using in my programs that I'd like to share with you today. And this, this is the kind of stuff that I, that I do to see, you know, just push the limits, see how far or how, how much I can do. And um, I'm pleased to say that I like, uh, uh, I have not been disappointed so far with this tool, GFX. Um, so in this um, piece of code, um, which I'm calling uh, synchronous producer consumer, there's a um, block, there's logic here, just counting um, and uh, accumulating the sum of that count and then just looping through all these variables and uh, putting the values that it counts in them. Um, and then there's logic in this block that once it knows that this block is done, it takes the data from these internal variables and it puts them in, in these internal variables. All this is done inside these blocks and there are no um, data flow wires um, that ever go from these blocks directly to any of these variables. And the way we do that is with the for loops, which lets you, it's, it's a block that allows you to um, execute the same piece of logic a number of times, finite number of times. And then the generic block, which uh, the application environment has its own internal database. Um, the data, there's different types of data based on the BACnet standard um, in part. So all the data is organized uh, uh, by data type and data, type, data number. So by knowing, uh, by selecting the correct generic for the data type that you're trying to use and knowing the number or mapping the number to the number of times you're executing this logic. So one through 10, then you're also executing the logic in 10 of these internal variables. As you pass the number from one to 10, the internal variable that you're mapping to in memory changes and the logic that is applied and the values that we get from that logic that are passed to this is being passed to a different internal variable. So in this example, I'm just simply counting as much as possible in the producer and then uh, letting the consumer take the data from these variables and putting them, uh, put, put them in these variables. And this is just the event hub that manages the uh, events of when one's done and the other one's ready to begin. Yeah. And so fire we find that the event manager fires um, an event to let the producer start counting. While the producer's counting, the consumer was idle. The producer stops. The event manager sees that it did and it uh, sends an event to the consumer to grab the data. Um, the consumer's logic is really fast, so it just grabs the data, puts it there. Um, and so the producer goes and counts again. So the, the whole point of this is that if this was an, a real world application, we would not want the, the consumer to try to take data from the producer before the producer was done. Um, so there's a number of applications for this. Uh, there's also applications for an asynchronous producer consumer where the producer is just producing data values on its own pace. And then at some point, the consumer just goes and grabs that data and it doesn't tell the producer about it. They're decoupled from each other. Where in some other applications, you do want to keep that tight coupling between them. So because there's um, perhaps there's more consumers uh, or something like that. So, and that's all folks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching.